School Finance Committee. The, bud uh, the budget work is the pieces of the budget that we're going to go over tonight, and then the school pieces, the school is looking to see if we may want to take over the plowing of the school again. Um, okay, wait. So the budget work is stuff you guys are going to do? We're going to do it, yeah. Yeah, like this one. So you talk about the budget of what it would take to do all that stuff. No, no. We were, it was, I had just budget work there, and then this guy, Bob Gray, calls me after I have the agenda done. And he says, can you ask the select board if they would do this? Okay. We've got our agenda, so I just put slash. So why don't we do this? The, the, so it's not school, the we school finance committee. So why don't we do Yes, exactly. Okay. School finance committee is number 10. Thank you. Yeah, okay. yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then the budget work pieces will be going over. Um, mm. I don't know if you want revenue. to do pieces, but I'm sorry. we'll be looking at the revenues and then constable <coughs> government operations. Yeah, just those parks and rec town hall. We'll tell the sections we want, or I can write them later. Okay. So I move we accept the agenda as amended. Well, just a quick question. We have on the select board minutes. Yep. Um, I got minutes from Kelly today. For They're not done. They were. Okay, I, I, I didn't get them until late, and so I didn't get a chance to finish editing them until today. So you okay. got the 10, 19 minutes mm -hmm. for the joint board, but 10, 12 is coming in your next pack. Well, There's like 10, 12. That's my job. You guys can do that. Okay. But you're the only one who got them. Okay. I'll be this I joint board today. by now. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So it wasn't, it was... I thought it was kind of odd. Yeah. Like that, you know. We just Nothing. tested to see if you were paying attention. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the deal. Was you got it. So, so we'll add that one next time. I made a motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Um, Second. 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 Uh, open it up to public comment. Uh, so if there's anything that's not on the agenda for this evening, does anybody... Bring it up or everything's perfect. I like to hear it. <laughs> uh, first, first on the agenda is the uh, Andrew Delaney, as we know, um, he wanted to step down on the planning commission as of the beginning of last year mm -hmm. and um, kind of he kind of stayed stuck around a little bit to get us through this. Um, a town plan, so now he formally has his letter of resignation. So I would just entertain a motion to accept his letter. I will say that, um, you know, it's unfortunate that we're losing somebody that's been around for quite a long time, but um, it also allows others to um, get on commissions as well. So I know he had a lot of uh, years of knowledge, so. I like the way he worded his letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Bob tricked him into <laughs> I was apparently, I was just thinking that, I'm like, oh, that's a new, that's a new technique I've not tried. Um, but it was, I was at a laugh. So we just need a motion to approve his resignation letter. So, so second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then with Andrew off now, what, what are we at number wise? We had <laughs> so now it's myself, it's Kyle Cartwright, which you'll add soon. And then it's um, Gene Krause. Uh, what? Gene Krause. Yeah, Gene Krause. Oh, yeah. And then um, uh, Wayne, Wayne now Wayne's running Wayne, Wayne, Wayne so County. So, so we're back four to well, counting eight. four counting eight. Yep. So three. So we're okay. still really big people for the planning yeah. commission. I'm hoping that next, your next meeting is the town plan. Um, mm -hmm. So hope maybe we'll get some people here and that'll be a good time to let people know, hey, you know. And Kelly has gone through again. Um, for the second time, through anybody who had much to say around the Dollar General, to say to them, hey, you were interested then, you know, now's the time to get interested in that, but so far nothing. And we did schedule a meeting for a joint board meeting of the DRB and the PC, because I did ask Rick Benson if he would basically give up his role as the DRB chair and become the PC chair for a year, just to get everybody on board, and he was we did talk a little bit about seeing if we could. Still trick him. <laughs> Apparently, well, he's, he's going to have to trick somebody into being willing to be the chair of the DRB. So we kind of talked a little bit about it, and, but we have a joint meeting of all of us, uh, both committees, on the 17th. So we're going to have to try to hack it out to see what we're going to do. Because if not, you were once upon a time had one committee. 
and then you split to PC, DRV, and, and you know, if you don't have people, you may, but I mean, we're gonna be working together for a while anyways to get through the zoning regulations, because we'd always planned on, I plan on being there as the zoning administrator, not as a PC member too, but for now we'll get, you know, we'll get people going, but so I'm trying to convince Rick to do it, so. He's calling it over, so I'm part of it there. Trick somebody. I'm gonna have to, that's a new thought. I'm gonna figure out how to trick people to join know. me. I'm not sure. You might be better to vote them on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
she went, I know, I don't have an eye. I guess it's a little bit. And get ahead of yourself. Then. I would love, without myself being on there, five would be great without me. So yeah, two five more. Five Yeah. And five or six. What I'm hoping for is maybe some, I would, I would actually like to see one or two members leave the DRB, go to the PC, because they have an understanding of it, and right. then put new people on the DRB. And it's easier to interpret the zoning regulations, I think, than the town, you know, than the town plan, and the PC is always rewriting the town plan or the zoning regulations. Yeah. So I'm hoping on the 17th, I'll bring cookies and food and drop <laughs> get them to come into that. We'll see. Item number four, we have motion to approve the liquor license for simple sandwiches. Isn't this a different form than we normally have? Uh, yes, because he's a new application. Okay. Yeah, yours, the next one is, will be like more computer type okay. stuff. Yep, yes. Well, I didn't know that that there was a change in ownership at the shop there. I said that Teresa, like, I don't know. I got to feel, you know, down here. Well, he's sandwiches are like, oh, well, that's because. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been so, trying to sell it for a while. So is he selling or just, yeah, I thought he was yeah. selling it. So, yeah. Selling the business. And then yeah. he has a big Sounds nice. Okay. Yeah, I think that it's longer because it's his first. Yeah. And this is just to, just to sell and not serve, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Right, it's a second bottle. Yeah. So. So we just need a motion here to prove that, and then we'll try it So moved. Second. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Let's make sure you sign it in the approval section. <laughs> oh, maybe, uh, are you telling us what to do? Oh, okay. Tell us what the board member comes on and does that. I'm always going to be that person. Uh, I'll take it over. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Every single time he would deny it. The always. He would always be at the because he was totally against smoking. So he would always say no to the tobacco. He would let the liquor license go, but he would always say no to always say okay, though, you know. I you know Sharon did revise it for them to eliminate any tobacco products and vaping products mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff on the town completely. I wonder how they, they must have done it with Orton. We don't want to make Bethel a dry town. Some people in the <laughs> uproar don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. There's a few dry towns, I think, in Vermont. Right? Yeah, there is a few. a couple up in the north and east. We got to get back to our five bars. I must have been Bethel in the payday at five bars. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where were they? There was a uh, pub. The, uh, the Hotel Emory. Yeah. Uh, Red Clover. Yeah. There's two on Main Street on the other side, mm -hmm. and there's one down where Audrey Turf is. Oh, yeah. Mama Bears. Huh? Mama Bears. Mama Bears. How many gas stations? There was uh, one, two, four. Because usually that's the end of the bars or gas stations. There's <laughs> that's funny. You know, like, like Rutland, like with all the gas stations and bars and that stuff. <laughs> My uncle used to run the Red Clover. Yes, he did. Yeah. I, and I graduated with him from high school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny small world, isn't it? You know small. Did you know all the bar names? <laughs> I believe I got kicked out of all of them in one night down here. <laughs> I was glad to see new ownership. <laughs> They'd probably glad not see me again. Oh, that's funny. All right. Next item is to talk about the uh, the acceptance of the. Sale on Sugar Hill, uh, 459 Sugar Hill offer of 56000 that we received last okay. week. So that's the same <clears throat> folks who bought Bill Tufts. It's that the same three people, Ian Nagler, Michelle Gabriel, and Robert Newton. And um, so they currently own 840. And so they bid on 459. Yeah, we actually have obviously that came up with a better offer than any of us expected to. Um, they were the ones that were here last meeting. Yep. 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 So we ended up having, um, you know, some bidders present, but um, 
there was two, it ended up being two in the end that were bidding against each other. And this is where we ended up. So if you, he asked me, he's like, well, do you think there'll be a problem? I said, no, I, I think we'll just let Portal accept this offer. So <laughs> we'll put out the 1061 or 1063, I can't remember the number now, notice anyways, and then, and obviously, you know, they knew they had 60 days from Whatever. tonight when you accept the offer to get their finances. Yeah. So. And then what did we end up um, fixing for a time to clean up the property? Six months. Zoe? Mm -hmm. From the closing. From the closing. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. All right. So we just need a motion to accept that. So move. And second. Right. <laughs> Everybody's moving. Okay, all in favor? Dave, who seconded? Right. Um, Mo and Dave. Okay. Dave. <laughs> There's a lot of things we don't need to be in. <laughs> well, we're out of that one now. That's one of them. <laughs> well, that one doesn't that happen right when we got on the board. Yes, it, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's been a while. Yeah, well, we're not that old. <laughs> three years. <laughs> I think it was three, at least three years. No, I, we, well, yeah, they'd already been in that. No? Like, yeah. Because no, you eight, bought it before I got here. It was a year, over a year before the Jeep left. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was like in the mid, well, Keith was here for like three years. No, two and a half. Two and a half. Mm -hmm. so it was probably a year into Keith's deal. Yeah. yeah. So that would have been four years, makes sense, because yeah. I think I was in here mm -hmm. three years. And okay, I think so we were almost here. Yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> it was already in the process of yeah. the other board. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then next up, uh, discussion in regards to engineering loan to start um, talking about Sand Hill and Crystal Drive. And Um, just like what we did before um, with the water project in Main Street is um, to, to start the initial process of performing engineer service through Aldrich Elliott. They had given us a quote to start the initial process with some timelines on there. Yeah, so they, so we're kind of going to be, in, in a way we'll talk about seven too, what as you know, we had the um, the uh, master plan for the water, and the state approves, goes through that, and obviously one of the things for them, you know, we had a list of things to address, and obviously the $2.8 million project was a big one, Crystal Drive is there, and they give you deadlines on this stuff. So this engineering loan is, is just that. It's just for Sand Hill, Crystal Drive, Highland Ave, Ram Street, and just a, a looking at something on Bicentennial, not a big Obviously, we don't own that line. They do, but maybe just something to do with the connection. And um, so we'll start this process. And then if we borrow and are borrowing construction money from them, they wrap it all into it, just like they have done for the 2.8. So you end up getting this for no interest. You just wrap it into the project. I know it's really early on, but is there opportunities for drinking water grants and things like that? We assume so, but it's really going to depend on what the federal government is doing at Time and how much money they, mm -hmm. you know, have thrown in infrastructure. We're hoping that that's obviously something that they do. Is if we can start planning, then after the presidential election, you know, depending who's president, sometimes that's one of the things they'll do to try to get the economy to keep going is infrastructure. So mm -hmm. if we're in a position to take a care of money or anything like that, like mm -hmm. they did, mm -hmm. you know, this would be good to have our planning mm -hmm. underway. Yeah. Now is the. Um the goal to do all of these at the same time, or are we looking at these individually? Um, I think we're going to end up doing them at the same time because Sand Hill, well, Crystal Drive is going to be a different thing because that may be wells. Mm -hmm. So that may be that we do, we certainly are going to do some engineering for that and then to figure out where we can put the wells on properties, that sort of thing. And then Highland, Graham, and Bison Center, or Highland and Graham and Sand, we probably will do in one project. But do, I don't have the cost yet, and it'll take a year. So we're talking about the construction spring of 2022 or 2023 at this point for planning. And because there's a timeline with um, drinking water money, let me see, I think they were. 
So, you know, as much as we like to think we've, you know, we've, we have tackled the big piece with the 2.8 million, it's still, you know, you stop to start filming on the next phase. So, it'll take a while. So, what's the state deadline for us? DWSRF, DWSRF is rolling. The, the loan program is a, is a rolling loan program, but the deadlines we had originally until December of this year to come up with a plan for Crystal Drive, and I think he gave us a little bit more time on that. So, you know, they're not going to let me grass grow under our feet now that they know that we're you know, tackling this stuff. So. Not to mention it, it's a problem for them. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so the preliminary engineering report is uh, them going out and actually, this is what the design of the project's going to look like and the estimated cost. Yeah, that they give you a little scope up? here, so they, yeah, they serve, they really give us the engineering mm -hmm. report and they'll let us know what that is. And then, obviously, we need ongoing systems and, um, oh, and the environmental information documents for us, which is something certainly for the state. So we're going to get, it's going to consist of project planning, existing facilities, where needs are alternatives, In our case, it's going to be um, no means and stuff. And then they start pressure issues on the drive are well aware of. So, yeah, so during the 2022 or 2023 construction, construction service, a potential bond in 2021, if we need one, just is going to depend what's out there for financing. But and this is just, just water. Is this yes. include storm water as well or no? No, this is just water. I mean, we will end up, I think we'll just end engineering the, ourselves. The, the, I just didn't know if there Unless was an opportunity here. to do it together. Or well, you can if you want, but we're hoping. Like that yeah, definitely. If we're going to have them look over our proposed design. Because here, what we end up doing is we just designed these systems on the fly with the construction of GW Tatro and it worked out. So, but yeah, they know what we're going to be doing. For Sandhill, especially, they know we're doing a whole enchilada. So, he said he'd be willing to look at our numbers that we have. So, if you see in the motion, I'm specifically asking you to specify it that way in your motion. It's because I'm also looking for grant money down the road, and for me to find grant money, I'm going to have to say that we adhere to our purchasing policy. So, that's why the motion is a little bit more wordy. Because otherwise, they could just qualify us for a loan if we didn't follow our own procurement policy. Services of outline in our discussion per the professional services clause in Bethel's purchasing policy. And then part B is the motion to authorize the town manager to sign the professional services agreement and the DWRSF loan documents. So moving. All right, so we're going to do A first, so Lindley and Paul. And I was going to tell you that the Professional services clause in your purchasing policy just allows you to hire them, purchase, allows you to hire someone without going through the whole bid process. Just, it doesn't make sense to put up someone else who doesn't already know your system. So. All right, so you got one William Paul on A. All in favor of A? All right. And then. Who is, I'm sorry, who is the second? Paul. Paul. Thank you. Yeah. And then the motion on the B. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, when, when did they think that they would have that information compiled so uh, that we could start working on whatever step two of this process? Um, let's see if he says in here. I know they talked about a construction of 22, 23. He has to, mid next year or something. He has to have, the, they change the time, so they have to have the design file by, I think it's going to be December of 2021 that he has to have. The file? And you have to do more now before you set it up. You kind of have to have like the, 
full report completed by that time. So I believe it will be December of next year. It gives them a year to do the work. So, so, but they'll be back just before then. Oh, I'm sure. I would think so. So you're saying by by December of 2021, they will have. We would be going to like the bond. Well, they're saying that? right here. If you look at them, they're saying they could have your current on the bond vote in 2021, March. So they would have to have, that's what he wrote here on the mm -hmm. introduction. So we would have to have a December 2020, I mean, I'm saying 20, yeah, it would be December 2021 that he would be have his whole report and everything done. But obviously we're gonna talk to him again before that. That's just the final product and then the vote here. Huh. If you needed a vote, it depends on what's available, so. Well, I just wouldn't have thought that it would work out that soon. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah, this is 90% complete by, uh, well, they say 115 2020, but I, I'm assuming they mean 2021. That's what I think, too. I think okay. it's a misprint in there. Yeah, okay. right there. Good assumption. <laughs> Since they're already late, you know, mm -hmm. by a right. lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion on the engineering? Piece of that for the next phase. Mm -hmm. All right, we have discussion of grant application in regards to work proposed for Sand Hill. So this is just a grant application. I was talking with Teresa, I believe right now to do that just includes the storm water. Yeah, the Does that include the water too that happened in there? <laughs> no. no. So it's just oh, storm. yes, it did. It did. It did include because Tim was doing water, you were doing pavement, and we were doing storm water. Yes, that was the whole. So upgrading storm water, 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 and redoing that road and back you, down to gravel, and you know ditching things like that was. And new pavement. It's estimated about half a million to do that road. Mm -hmm. uh, this grant uh, grant application uh, to V Trans is for three hundred thousand. So uh, based on the three thousand, if you awarded the three thousand, then we would have twenty percent of three thousand. So it'll be seventy-five thousand that we'd have to come up with there. But you know, right now we'd have to budget two hundred thousand on our end mm -hmm. um, for that project. Yeah. And right now we were kind of anticipating doing this work in the 22-23 budget yeah. cycles. So not this one that we're working on, but the next one. Mm -hmm. So that means that we're going to have to budget two hundred thousand between now and then. So we have two budget cycles to budget two hundred thousand. How well, does that interplay with the with the water main work? Is it is it an add on to the water main or is it totally separate? As far as the what, the work or the it, yeah, well the work. The work will be at the same time. Okay. So that's why I'm writing. I want to write this grant because if we can get this. This will do the room row installation and the engineering and the right of ways. So okay. if we do all that for the stormwater, that obviously helps us on the water side. Right. Okay. And if we got this, and we would put it towards Sand Hill. So that's why we're kind of, we're, I'm just trying to attack it from all angles because if we don't, if we got this, great. If we don't, at least we applied and we still have the option of financing through the state. So, so, so if we didn't get this, that amount would end up getting rolled into the bond vote. Yep. Towards, and that was my main thing. If, like, if I, we need a bond vote, because yeah. right now, if you look at the capital plan that we did on roads, and we leave next year, we just do Gilead, where we leave the apron, or we do part of the apron, but then take that back to dirt. That was 45000 so we have 115 from this year, 115 from next year. We have enough money in that capital fund budgeted to do that work. With the grant. On, on Sand Hill, with with, I had a little note on the side that we were gonna to try to get a paving grant. Yeah, and I didn't think I put 175 in revenue up there, so we'll have to look and the see. The only challenge we have with the state right now is, yeah. is the state has decided, so they didn't do any any of the grants this year because mm -hmm. of, of budgeting. And next year, they cut the grant program in half. Yeah. So you know, the likelihood is that probably if we, do qualify, it wouldn't be until the, not this season, but next season, and at the earliest, that we'll probably get a grant of that size. The only so. good, but, but what they did do is they gave us a additional aid, 
state highway aid of 30, I don't know what that means. 38,000 that we end up getting another, um, oh, right here, uh, 38,908.92 in state highway aid. So my note down here for later was for us to move that also into the capital fund. So we don't need it, we should put it in the budget we have because we didn't budget for it, so let's put it right in and then that already cuts down um, the amount we may have to come up with. So maybe we have to borrow, but maybe it won't be as much and, and then again, if we get this or there's some you know, infrastructure money from the federal government, then we may have more opportunities if they keep using this galvanized, we'll have, we just don't know. So I'm gonna to try to, we figure we have the DWSRF and we know we could apply through there. We'll see what comes out from the Fed, we'll apply through the state, and we're just gonna apply for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and see how much we can get to offset. All these walls. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, um. Because we have Sand Hill, and we also have the lower piece of Christian Hill, and then the yep. lower piece of Bethel Mountain that are kind of the and we'd stack those out for paving as soon as possible for paving right yeah yeah, yeah. So, so we did and I had talked to Chris Vaughn a while about Canberra and just you know I'm like what this has a this is a federal highway like you know, is there something else out there that we could you know for money but yeah. that's going to depend so yeah and then we had a structures grant in the hopper because I applied for a structures grant for the bridge on Wood, Woodland, and, um, but I asked, I did write to Chris Bump today and said, hey, it says in this email that anybody in the queue to receive money will still be in the queue when you get the money next. But I'm like, but we don't know if we were awarded the money, so, well, you know, can you find out where we stand on that? So. Well, the good thing is if we can have things engineered yeah. to be ready to, go. ready to go on the shelf, then mm -hmm. we're more apt to receive money. Plus we've been working well with the state. Yeah. You know, so. Yep. And, and that's you don't okay. actually need a motion for us on that. You, you have the authority to sign up for and grants and stuff, right? We don't uh, this is yes, but you part of your grant um your your grant um not word the policy was that basically that you guys know what people are applying for. No, so, yeah, I don't have to give you a Okay, motion. then that's fine. Just so you know what we're right. <laughs> Okay. I think we just have to know about it because okay. that was the point. I can't remember. It was one identity. Was it? Was it the better connections that two people with two different towns? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. but yeah. There was something where we didn't know what was going on, and all of a sudden we had. Yeah, because I had. Because I had a grant policy when Greg was right. here because I said the board needs to know. Right hand is the left hand is the Know what's going on. Yeah. So that's that. So no motion. No. Let's blame that on the town manager. <laughs> Make it easy. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on that? Mm -hmm. We have the Bethel Royalty Transfer Station budget. I would like to thank Therese for all the work she's put into this, okay. formulating this budget. Well, you are welcome. I figure it helps protect Bethel's interests since they owe us the money, but I'm also yeah. happy to help. Um, sorry, on all, all the good it did me, but I just think Her help. Um, so this budget went to the BR. BRTS board. Board already? Yep, the BRTS board. And we approved it. And then Chris wanted me, you have that other piece of paper on your desk, so I can see, which was how Jen and I came up with the revenues, because Chris was asking me about the 900,000. I told him that that was not what Jen and I had come up with, so he asked me for that. And, um, well, I mean, I guess my concern is, you know, we have, we have a really nice spreadsheet here of every line item cost, but then all of a sudden, you know, the cost ends up being you know, 1.1 million, and then they just have a revenue like it's 1.1 million. It's like, how did you get to 1.1? I mean, it's so easy. I mean, this, that's the issue we're in right now is that we just, they came up with costs and said, okay, we're going to have our revenues equal that. And then every year it's like, you know, you're $100,000 on your revenue, you know, so. That was how the previous budgets were formulated. Well, that's, you, 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 right. you look at your expenses and then make your revenue match it. 
Isn't that right. how it works? That's a good budget. <laughs> <laughs> so the, On paper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So the piece of paper that you have, it says kitchen bag, mm. three gallon. And so it tells, this is how Jen and I had come up with our number um, to figure out what, you know, we, we, we actually went back and looked at historically what she was bringing in. And we, we tried not to focus too much on the year, last year's number because of COVID, because it was so inflated. You know, multiple, multiple days of doing $9,000, 7000 right. 9000 a Saturday was not normal for that facility. During the week, you know, she could have a $1,500 day. She didn't see any of that during COVID. So we, Jen, I strongly urged them to kind of almost ignore some of the revenue for last you know, for the budget ending June 30 because of COVID. So we went back and looked historically at, you know, what she'd been bringing in, or not her check, because the gen's kind of been there <laughs> since COVID. And um, so we had come up with a proposed, with a budget of, for revenue of 836, 396. And then there was a couple of uh, members from Royalton that felt we were actually being too fiscally conservative. And we, you know, we were just like, look, what do you, you know, we, we want to err on the side of caution. That's what Jen and I felt, and she didn't want to be put in the position where they were saying, you know, you're going to make all this money, and she just didn't believe she was going to make it, because if everybody and their mother cleaned out their basement, attic, garage, they're not going to do it again if we get quarantined again. So I could understand her hesitation. And then two of the members from Royalton said, we we're being too fiscally conservative, so they wanted to put last year's number in the mix. So then they looked at a couple of years and they decided to come to high 800s. And then the other guy just said, well, why don't we just call it 900? And Jen was like, why don't we just call it meh? But you know, <laughs> the only offsetting charge Jen has is obviously the tipping fees is that will be less. So if the revenue is a little less, you're going to see those come down a little bit too. Her expense for, um, uh, well, that's the theory fee, that that fee hauling, yes. But that hasn't always happened. Right, but that's, you know, her, that's what kind of what we talk about. So, and then obviously we don't recycle numbers and stuff. And, and um, but this is what they came so, to. So, Mo, has, has the um, board talked about um, kind of having their own little capital fund there where, you know, you yeah. put us aside so much a year so that when you have these projects it doesn't you know we'll get that okay we need to buy something this year ten thousand well, dollars I've, I've been trying for that for five years and it hasn't worked yet and uh, this is such a tight budget that if we have a surplus it'll go into a you know an account well, the other thing i was thinking of is i know that from talking to Therese that the idea was well one to pay back bethel our money um so that was why the budget was so tight, but but even if you establish the fund and put let's say a dollar in it, we should have fund, it, right? That then you can move money to. You know. And it does say that the end of this week, we right. that one more put in reserve because they do have a little more in reserve to close the transfer station. But their last estimate for that was twenty thousand, so she wants to make sure that's correct. Uh -huh. And then. Um, but I'm saying, and I'll tell you exactly what the auditors are going to say, why would you put money in a closure fund if you're in a deficit position? They're going to tell you, no, no don't do uh, it. Closure fund. Well, because right here, she, you have already have the closure reserve account. But that's just for the landfill. That's, no. That's so for the transfer closure. station. It's not for the landfill. No, what I'm talking about is capital expenses. So if all of a sudden, I don't know. That's what they talk about. We need about. to replace the scales. That's right. what they talk about. Something like that. Right. Capital. But like, the only way we're going to do that is if we've got to increase our revenues to, to, to make room to budget for that. And, and they did say that. So short term, right. But yeah. Long term, you know. So where it says so. put in the reserve, they meant start a new reserve for okay. capital equipment or capital something. But. It's just going to depend how it turns out. This budget does include some increases. Yes, it does. They increased the scale fee from 160 to 170. Yep. And they also, um, there's some miscellaneous things like couches and some things like that went up. They increased the alliance fees 10%. And Bethel and Royalton used to get a deal. Bethel and Royalton paid less per capita. They took that away this time so that everybody pays the 1219 per person 
above right. the 19 per person. And so there was a 10% increase for all towns. Bethlehem Royal is a little bit more because for some reason we got a lower rate last time in the past, probably because we were the co-owners. So that's increased in here. The other thing they started charging, or they're gonna start is January 1st is two dollars a gallon for compost that's exactly what randolph is charging and three dollars of flat fee for recycling so if you come in with one bag or three bags or three bucks every time you bring recycling it's three dollars so how do they do that with tickets or when somebody's standing there it's at the door or honor system. honor system Right. That said. covers cardboard, glass, everything. Yeah. yeah. Does that minimum still stay at twenty dollars to go to the scales, or does yes. it yes. change too? Yes. Okay. So, um, and we we took that. You can see with the math here. We were saying two hundred and seventy-seven people a week at three dollars to come up with forty-three thousand. We think that number's higher because there's a lot of Saturdays you see more than two hundred and seventy-seven mm -hmm. people, but because it's new, we didn't want to overstate it. So that's how. But you may start seeing less people. And we might. So we you know, try. They might hold on to the recyclable one more week, you know. Mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. And they might. Mm -hmm. So that's why we tried to be reasonably reasonable about numbers. Yeah, we, had, we, had, we, we basically had two options yeah. to do it this, a flat fee mm -hmm. or charge people per volume. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the, the flat that's fee was a better. Pardon? Try to figure out volume. Right. I mean, you'd have to go by a basis of people coming in right. and out of there so fast. Mm -hmm. you know, you know. And there's a lot of people that probably won't pay anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's how those revenues were determined. And the expenses kind of keep for themselves unless you have a. And then I think when, when we were at the uh, special meeting, there was talks about that the closure fund had uh, like fifty thousand dollars in it even though you only need twenty or thirty. Mm -hmm. Th is that extra amount accounted for in this budget? No, what they no. they were having a conversation about that. Jen is gonna be out for a little while, but when Jen comes back, she was gonna double check to make sure that the closure cost of the transfer station is still the twenty thousand. And then the BRTS board could move that thirty into another fund or they could pay down Bethel or, you know, and then, you know, there was some talk at that, there was talk at the other meeting about a line of credit. I gave the interest rate out, but I wasn't sure who was doing what to whom about that, so we didn't do anything with it. Nothing. And BRTS, so what we had done is, I put enough money in here as a placeholder so that BRTS could pay Bethel, like half a percent interest at the end of the month on what's the new to new from that they couldn't pay, and then budgeted in a payment of, Fifteen thousand. Right. If there's more, maybe they can pay. And they didn't like that idea so much, Royalton. But, but well, a lot, a couple of them did because they were like, well, if half a percent is better. I said, look, it's a placeholder. You owe us eighty grand. You got to pay it sometime. So, but I also felt if they're meeting with Casella on Tuesday, why put you got Casella? I don't want to figure out I, which way you're going first before you try to tackle the line of credit, and then if you're gonna talk to sell, that may become unnecessary. So at least we have a placeholder in there, yeah, we'll get some money and figure it out. So, I mean, you have that meeting tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. You and a David. representative from him. So, anyway, so that's how the, what's the problem? This paper, this paper that Therese handed out has got all of our uh, revenues and expenses. Uh, the uh, Food waste is not included in this, and that's about a between 800 and 1,000 a month that we're losing there. So that's you know roughly $12,000 a year we're, yeah. we're, we're losing on food scraps. Yeah, because there was compost was in here at 6,600 if the, for the revenue for that recycling piece, and we had just started because right. that was just July. So I mean, right. that's most right. That's going to get big and But she's paying anywhere from 800 to 1,000 a month to, to for disposal yeah. of it. Yeah, because we had devised it, yeah, by the... Yeah, they never figure out that right, yeah. Yeah, and who knows, right? I mean, you know, we don't know what the crystal ball is going to look like as far as what are people going to do? Are they going to, now that they have to pay $2 a gallon, are they going to do their own composting? Or, but like Mo made this point, I think, at that meeting, was like, so what? 
if they hang on to a convoluted, it's less of an expense. You're not losing money. Right. This, I think, was the point Mo was trying to make that night. Was if they don't bring it, they don't bring it. So. And I'm hoping that the, enough of these facilities are going to complain to the legislature that they mandated this with no, and there might be some grants available down the road for this, maybe, to help cover costs, maybe. How many, how many tons of trash do we do out of there a year now? Yeah. Uh, well, you have to look here. Right. Tons of rice. I mean, you, you do over... 4,000, because we had 4,023, I had 4,023 ton right. at the 170, so you, you're doing just over, you're doing four or 5,000 ton, I guess, right? Yeah, every day they ship a, a tractor trailer out of there, and the gross weight is like 92 to 98,000 pounds, so we'd have to deduct the weight of the truck and the trailer off and see how much actually. Every day? Huh? Every day? Every day we're open, yeah. So that's like 25 tons. Well, yeah, that's a 25 net load. Because your net load is probably like 50,000 pounds. Something like that. I mean, once you deduct the tractor and then. But when they, when they leave there, scale weight is anywhere from 92 to 98,000 because they can't be over 100,000 on the road. So it's, anyway, so we had, this was what they had kind of encouragingly came up with at the end. I mean, they, they, there was a lot of expenses that they didn't question, that people yeah. didn't question. But, you know, we did go back historically and Jenny named some stuff, and she combined some things that made sense to her, like the way hazardous waste works and what they're going to pay for there. And um, so we had, we went to scratch, just like we did when we started with Bethel's budget, you know, a few years ago. We went there. Because she also started coding things herself, so she might have been different, doing it differently than Chet. So, um, but anyways, uh, so this was what they, oh, I'm not sure I did a percentage of what the increase was. So she had, she had cut money out, so you're still, it was still 2.7% less than last year. So it was a reduced budget. Oh, it didn't hurt because the excavator it paid off in this budget. Here. Right. Mm -hmm. well, chunk. And she's been doing a lot of equipment maintenance, and you can see that she put you know money into that. So. And actually, she's got about fifty-four thousand out of this current budget already. She has, yeah, she's really done a good job. And um, I know one of their complaints was the overtime, but she's cut their overtime down significantly. I mean, Wayne's maybe doing fourteen or so hours, but basically, yeah. But She's gone. If you look at her time card, which most sees, she's been working an insane amount of hours. So, which the board's going to find out without Jen being in there for four weeks. They're going to see what it amounts to to, to yeah. cover what Jen is doing to meet specifications what the state wants. That's right. That's right. So, what is this? Uh, I guess uh, I have. I've actually seen you guys have a budget in your packet, but I don't remember you guys ever taking any action in the past. Did you, do you normally hear, do you give it your blessing, or? That's the same thing. So yes, the, no, the, the interlocal agreement just says what? That the BRTS board will pass it on to the select board for their? Right, yeah. the two, the, just Ralton and Bethel for their approval. For their approval. And I'm wondering if mm -hmm. Ralton doesn't approve it, and we did, I mean, hypothetical. I'm not telling anybody. Yeah. But um, what happens then? I it does it throw back, back to the board? It's to, probably going to go back to the BRTS board, but um, you another, would think. Another two months of that. They do think they should pass it tomorrow night is when they meet because they got what they wanted. They, yeah, Bethel, in my I opinion, think. we gave a lot of concessions that, yeah. I mean, I, I was, there's a, yes, we, we gave concessions. Yes, I mean, they better pass it. And like I said, if it wasn't for trees, it would have been a, we'd still be at it. Oh, I don't know, it was a, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was contentious, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was tough, I, you know. So, um. It's a good thing it wasn't recorded. Well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it, all, it's all downloaded. Oh. Um, 
But anyway, so you guys apparently do need to take action and you need to accept it or approve it or whatever it is, the language you all want to use. So can I'm going to abstain it. from the vote on it. Well, I mean, it's kind of an odd thing because, you know, states in the interlocal agreement now the, you know, the day-to-day -day activities at the facility, including budgeting, is, is done by the manager and the board. The joint board, you know. However, you know, then another part of it says that every year's budget will be approved by the joint board and then, and then approved by each select board. So yeah. it's kind of, I mean, I think we've always kind of done it as more of a, a pencil whipping you know, more of an information like, okay, here's the right. budget and move it along. Because it doesn't affect the, the, no. the, the so taxpayers. No, but. So maybe you don't approve it, maybe you just make a motion to accept it. Yeah, more accepting than you know, approving it. Uh, yeah, maybe just do a little change of words. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the proposed solid waste budget? I mean, I looked through it, I can think of a bunch uh, of things that didn't pick. I didn't quite get it all, but maybe. I may be mistaken of what I heard, but did you say something about we're going to have to start paying for recycling? Yes. And compost? Yes. I thought when you started that, I thought it was something that was kind of free to Vermont since that when first they when they back to, to recycle and compost. No, because when they passed that, that act, you know, was it 148? 143. 143, thank you. It, it basically said, so say you had someone pick up your trash, to sell or anybody else they couldn't charge you separately for recycling. They had to build it into the price. So your bag price ended up going from three to five to six bucks because they were mandated by the state that they had to pick up recycling. And so they could build it into your bag price. But the funny thing is, while they mandated transfer stations to take food scraps, they didn't mandate haulers. Right. So it was another one of those sort of unfunded mandates because now all of a sudden they're coming to the transfer station. They don't have to pick it up and deal with it. People are like, oh, it's fine, I'll do it for free. And you do have some residents who paid to have their trash picked up, but they brought their recycling to the transfer station because it was free. But it's not free. Recycling costs them almost seven. They're losing about 70000 a year on recycling because the market's dropped out because people don't. You know, four other countries won, were oh. taking recycling, and now they're not. So, yeah, so they're going to institute a flat fee of three bucks for your recycling, no matter how much you bring, and two bucks a gallon, effective January 1 of this year. Yep. And this is through Bethel and Royalton State, or is something that the state required us to do? No, Bethel and Royalton, the transfer state, they've been losing money for a while, so they realized that they had to start doing something more with their recycling. And so they, and if you go to a lot of other facilities, you're paying. Or if you have someone pick up your trash, just like you're paying. You may not know you're paying because they just inflated your bag price, but you're paying to get rid of your recycling. Well, I was, I was talking to a, a manager down in Rutland a while back, and I had to pay for it for the, the metal that I had to take down to the dump. And I had to pay for it, and I was talking to him, and he told me that, they don't pay for metal down here. Mm -hmm. And he said, with well, a few other places, they say that too, which I didn't go into detail, but my just kind of surprised where we pay for it. And then the hauler comes in, and then all, we, the hauler pays the town, so actually they pay twice. Right, which also helps subsidize the, the maybe the losers, you know, the ones that like the zero sort alone costs almost 50000 a year. Costs. So if you're making a little money on recycling, say, or say the metal, I mean, not recycling, like metal, I'm not making money on metal, like you're paying, plus we're getting paid to deal with it, because we also have to handle it, um, then it helps, you know, offset that, that loss of the zero sort of 50 grand a year. So. Actually, Doug, we don't, you, the only time you really pay for metal is if you've got more than a cubic yard, which is a stove. Yeah, right, right, right. I mean, a lot of yeah, a lot of people come in with armfuls and just throw it for nothing. Yeah, I mean, I had to take a bike and stuff like that, but I had to take the truck to that before too. Yeah. You know, to get rid of it around the house and stuff. And I was kind of surprised that you wouldn't pay for that. And it was most of it. I wouldn't wait, but it was on the arm thing. How much did you have? And that's what you know. I'm not being that's what I had it so much. And I did pay the price on it, but then I found out that they also get paid again. Well, I was kind of curious on how they work this stuff. And that's, that's why, I mean, it's... Uh, until, just, until just recently, uh, we were 
a break even or pain to get rid of our scrap, scrap iron. But now the price has come up a little bit, so we're getting a little bit for it. Yeah, and, and recycling over years, each year we're, we're it used to be you were all, you were pretty much breaking even. It used to be, you know, revenue or cost in revenue and you know balance it off. But over over five to ten years, now the recycling isn't as valuable to whoever was buying it before. Mm -hmm. And I was actually I was reading I was doing some research then. Um, supposedly uh, there were some countries like China and some other ones that actually were buying recycling from the United States and. They stopped doing that during the last couple of years, mostly because they have enough recycling in their own countries that they don't need it anymore. But um, so what's happened is now now we have a lot on the market. You know, we have all this recycling there that's not worth anything. Um, One so, of the reasons China quit taking it because it was eighty percent contaminated. Yeah. And they were just they had so much they had to dispose of out of what they were buying that it wasn't worth it. And what we probably should have done, or at, you know, probably over the last X amount of years, is we probably should have started to collect something in, you know, at a small level and kind of as, as the demand or the prices went down, we probably should have been collecting something. Mm -hmm. We haven't for so long, but at the same time, it really hasn't been looked after as closely as it should. And now all of a sudden, we're like, whoa, wait a minute, like, yeah. You know, there's some items that we're, we're losing big time down there. We're, you know, like right now, the transfer station owes the town of Bethel money, you know, so we're like, hey, people owe us money. And they're like, we don't have, you know, uh, so it's kind of those things. But, so they're just trying to balance it out. Plus, we've also, you know, there's cases of people that come in from outside the area. So they may live in an area where that charge for recycling right now. And they come to ours, dump recycling that for free, and uh, don't pay anything. So then, you and I that go here, we're kind of paying for their stuff, you know. So the idea is, if they want to come from outside here and drop their recycling, then at least they're going to have to pay something for it, which might deter them, which down the road might make it cheaper for you and I, you know. Well, so when they make off the thing, but they don't want to they be paying quite for the trash, and you pay. What are we saying? So now, I think what's going to happen is I just going to stop putting everything in one bag and take yeah. it to the Well, we did. The that was one of the things that Jen had kicked around, kind of we looked at initially, was her idea was, which I, I actually was in agreement with, was um, you pay the same, whether it's, it's three bucks a bag, whether it's trash or recycling. And if it's a 30 gallon bag, then it's five bucks. If it's a contractor bag, it's eight bucks. Because I'm a big believer, you generate it, you pay to get rid of it. Right. That's going to be the easiest way. So we did actually talk about that idea, but that idea did not fly. Yeah, so, no. um, but that was one of the things we talked about originally was yeah, you they, generate it, you pay for it, and, and, and then everything's the same price, then nobody could complain because, well, you know, I had this recycling or start throwing it together. It wouldn't matter if they threw it together. So maybe they could And, and, I, think, and I think Mo touched base on it, but they also have gotten very picky on the recycling. So the people that like Casella, the people that purchase some of the product. Now, like even like if the cardboard's got some leftover pizza on it, yeah. it goes in the trash, not the recycling. You know, right, so right. it's gotta be, you know, the can has to be washed and you know, so it's, they're really picky on what they collect now because what they'll do is they'll just take that and it'll end up being a trash thing and then they'll say, okay, well, we're not gonna pay you for it. And this and stuff, we're just gonna pay for this stuff. In another year, you might just see that the only plastic's going to be recyclable is number one and number two. And now we're taking up two to five. That's right. Yeah, you guys. I mean, that's going to be the people that do the zero sort are going to cut down. All we want is number one and number two plastic, and that's it. Okay. Well, something else I saw too is that Casella bought out eight Roots. Right. And they discontinued several of them. Yeah. Especially like Lip Lipus was one of them, so that whole area of Louisville eliminated those roots. So where well, would they go with their Well we heard was they only bought certain roots. That's what Casella told Jen. <laughs> they only bought certain roots. Just the stuff on the main road, basically. Yeah, just the stuff on the main road. Yes. They, you know, their trucks, they don't want to go out So now the other people are going to either have to hire someone else, Goodwins, or someone else, or bring, bring it, way up or bring it down yeah. themselves. It depends who else serves out there. Goodwins or 
Yep. Somebody else on this mm -hmm. one again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but yeah, that's what we had heard was at first, we just heard that they bought certain groups, but who knows. Um, and we haven't seen, been able to correlate how much more we're generating because of that yet, because it's just a perfect effect. I mean. So Mo, how does that, as a customer, how, when we go to the transfer station, mm -hmm. when this goes into effect, how, how does that, so if I come in and I have, you know, like usual, like I'll have, say, four bags of trash, mm -hmm. and then I'll have cardboard, and I'll have- Well, you'll go across the scale. I'll have metal and glass, yeah. you know, yeah. and then, I don't, but I don't right now, but say I have food scraps. So, how do, I, how do they know how much I have? Like, well, you know. Jen and I have been talking about that, and we're thinking of have people come in one, one way, close one of the big doors. Everybody's got to come in and pay before they dispose of their... Because I'm just thinking it's going to probably be a lot more to, for somebody to do there. they got to track, you know, when there's going to be recycling, or they've got some... Yeah, but waste you, and all, you, you know, you're going to come through trash. and you're, you're going to pay before you dispose of anything. And you might have three or four different things, you know? Right. Yeah. I thought we were doing that already. I think that if I'm wearing a bag of trash and throwing it down to next to the recycle, I thought you had to pay before you threw it, took it up here. Some people do, some people don't. Because, like, right now, what I do is I'll have like two bins of, say, recycling stuff. So I'll I'll, uh, well, usually what I do is I'll go over the scale and I'll take my bags because it's cheaper to go over the scale with multiple bags than it is to pay per bag. So I'll go over the scale, throw my bag of trash in, and then when I come back over the scale before I pay, then I bring my recycling into the doors, you know. Mm -hmm. But now you're going to have to, somebody's going to have to keep track of that. You know? Exactly. You know? Yeah, because they talk about the honor right. system or then they talk about, yeah, she talked about doing something yeah, else. So, you know, I mean, it's like, it just seems like it's going to be, it almost sounds like you almost met another person to like. If everybody was honest, the honor system would work beautifully, but no, not, not yeah. everybody's honest. You're right. If they just walked up and said, I had three gallons of compost, two bags of recycling, three trash, and you go bring them up and they leave and it would be just like this. And some people get paid, some people are going to lie about it. I was looking today and a lot of the bigger facilities have um, like these punch cards. Mm -hmm. So you have Hard to buy X amount of punches and that, that goes for, tr like you were saying, for yeah. the trash, for the recycling, yeah. and you know, it's easy for somebody but to But them bigger them. facilities yeah. have got 15 people working in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, and then we don't have the money in the budget for more people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get that money. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Actually, there is a part time person in that budget. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion to. Well, I guess we'll just say accept. Motion to accept the. Uh, this would be the 21 22 budget for the Bethel Relton Solid Waste facility. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Did the uh, landfill at one time where we making any money at all? Because it sounds like that, um, that we seem like one area old, like what was 80,000 or something like that, per se. But when, I thought, we, I thought at one time that the landfill was like independent of itself. You know, they was like, they made their own money. They, they bought their own equipment. They, they done their own service and stuff. So that means like they're not making that money that they were making before. Well, was, they always were. I mean, make they always had their own money to spend, and and both Royalton and Bethel, if they bought a piece of equipment, they couldn't run it home. Both Royalton and Bethel yeah. had to sign the right. agreements. Money, yes, but I mean, I can see eighteen, nineteen, they didn't make any money. I don't know how long if they. I don't know how it worked, honestly, I'd I have, I have to go back and look to see, but I, I can tell you going back several years, they've always owed Bethel money at the end, except for one year out of maybe five. And sometimes it's just the way the cash flow is for them, but um, so I couldn't say historically, and I definitely couldn't say when you ran a landfill, if you made money at the landfill. I don't that know. was pre-90. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, Bethel and Walton uh, each had their own separate landfill until 70 when they 
joined down there to royalty. Yeah. But a majority of the money that's owed to the town uh, was acquired that way this past year. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, a, and a good That's example of good. A, a good example of something that has been uh, missed in the budget was the recycling. Like that was a big piece. The recycling was a negative eighty thousand, ninety thousand item. So, but we made money at but it. But what happens is that we do the we do the bookkeeping for well, we do the AR and AP. So we pay out the bills and we pay mm -hmm. the uh, workers. So what happens is sometimes just the way you. The revenue comes in, or the cost goes out. Sometimes they don't have technically enough money to write the check. In their checking account. So it's the, the same as the water. Comes out of, it comes out of our account until they can pay. It's it the back. same as the water and sewer department. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a cash flow that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Same for the towns. That's why the town usually gets a tax anticipation note because you have a fluctuation of four times a year when you're collecting. Yeah, the school. So the times, yeah, yeah. then you got to pay the school for more money than you took in, and then. You're Oh, this is not a question here. Um, dang it. I knew that when it gone. It'll come back. It'll come back. Maybe next week it is. Sometimes. That's right. Yeah. Um, Anything else? Yeah. 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 All right. So we're good with that. So next up, we had to go with the. All right. Which one do we have for Lisa? Was it the budget? Yep. It was budget. It was no, no. Yeah, budget. okay. Yep. So we have new budget season, so we're starting off with, um, usually that comes first as we talk about revenues, which the revenues is usually the easiest, most consistent piece of the budget from year to year. And then um, tonight we're also going to be talking about um, uh, funding in regards to constable and parks and public places and municipal office and town hall and government operations. So this won't be like tonight's not the night that we like everything's in stone for the budget. This yeah. is this is one of many times that we'll start looking at each component in our budget. Um, and, and usually what will happen is um, three will start putting together uh, estimated budget numbers uh, based on uh, hearing from either the department head or mm -hmm. what has yeah. happened in the past. Or, uh, oh. And then once we get into some of these, sometimes, you know, we'll have to, like, you know, the fire department will come and, you know, do they think what they need or the constable or the rec committee. Yeah. Some of those will, or the highway department. So I haven't done the highway, I started the highway budget, asked Alan a question or two the other day, but I gotta get that together and then sit down with Alan and, and maybe Jason too just to see what's what up mm -hmm. there so we can do that one. But I started it. And then the fire department and listers and rec. And so I told you to sit down with her this week or so and do the rec. Um, listers. I'll have a draft and then they'll look at it, see if they have any changes. Fire department, I'll shoot off to Dave and Gary and then they just sit down with them if they have specific questions or tweak their numbers. And then the bigger one is obviously highway because it's the most money. And um, mm -hmm. so we'll look at that. And, and um, but so these were these were the other, these were the easier ones to go through and do. Um, so first we'll just look at the revenue pieces, which um, this is just the local revenue, so that would be anything that would be taken in through um, the town clerk, or the fees, or yeah. um, some of the state um, state and federal highway uh, monies that we collect. So under local, I had a, the yeah. clerk fees. I talked to Pam a little bit, and it's, it's been kind of funny because COVID, they were really slow, and then they were getting hammered. Now all the lawyers and stuff are really busy, and there's a big boom in the real estate, so it's, it's hard. We can't bank on that. So we decided we kind of we just leave that one alone. The one that dropped the most here is town hall rental fees because we obviously have not been renting out the town hall. We might rent. There's a lady who wants to do uh, morning yoga, and she's agreed that she would clean it and just use one bathroom for her like five or eight people, and she could do that in this space. So we're we're looking at it for, um, but it seems. I just don't see us really, you know, running out right now. Anything that was at the town hall or town office, we kicked to here. 
for meetings and um, BRTS is meeting here because they didn't have your the right. too small at the tra at the Royalton town office where they met for a long time. So that's the big reduction there is I don't I is town hall rental fees. Um, everything else let's see class one two three station. Oh, the tower lease went up because they added another carrier, so that was nice. I guess one thing I had a question on was the recreation fees. Yep. Being, well, I guess if everything's good, yeah. you cross into July, then I think you're going to be fine. Should be back on. Yep. I think so. On track. Obviously, we're probably not going to collect anything from. Yeah, unless well, unless you know, if we open back up, you do start selling pool passes in like May and June, yeah, so we could. We just don't know. Yeah, might be something to think about that would yeah. be off there. Yeah, exactly. Which we won't, and we've known. So, but we also have savings in that budget, so there was that. Um, so that was power lease, and then what is? Um, I have a question. What is under miscellaneous local revenue? There's the item other. Insurance reimbursements usually something okay. you know it's usually that the insurance company. I see that has to date we have fifty seven. Yeah, it's usually insurance claims. It's okay. Something happens, so we pay our. It's something really you don't know. Okay. That's and um, so nothing huge really. The only there was a nice. Let's see what was the one we talked to recently about. <laughs> And oh, I know that's um, on the last page was. Um, and the tower lease is that accurate? I know yeah, we budgeted we, a few times for it, but it's never. No, that's right. I talked to the guy, okay. the lease, Judy, and I have all talked right. to him. Yeah, and it is because they added Verizon, so they owed us. They um, so now that's what they our monthly carrier prices. And did I miss it? The. Um, I miss the um, the money that we get from Green Lantern. Yeah, it's down to miscellaneous, the last item. It's miscellaneous, okay. under, yeah, miscellaneous, 1500 mm -hmm. And then, oh, here it is, new and really. So I talked to Judy and, oh, yeah, gotcha. and Louise about land use under property taxes, because that had been running higher than we budgeted, and they had some, they had somebody leave, but they had some new and rollies, so we were able to increase that. So budgets are up, revenues are up over last year, but only 0.28%. So, um, and part of that too was in the past we budgeted for the general fund reimbursement of sewer and water, and the, and the auditors said don't budget for the revenue because you need to take it. It's the only way it's going to reduce what they owe you. So don't put it in as a revenue anymore. Okay. So. I know when it comes to the combination of delinquent taxes, penalties, yeah. and interest, we've been trying to. I that down I the last years. So how? I didn't see any numbers in there for like year to date. But how are we doing year to date on? Well, it's going to be different this year because see how in the previous it's always super high. Mm -hmm. Well, this starting this year, July first, we started doing taxes different. Summary: all their budget was on an accrual basis, but your taxes were on cash. So we moved them to accrual. So now they're. This is going to become one number. They're going to now it shows if you look at your balance sheet, it shows your taxes. <coughs> so it takes everything you bill and it subtracts out of that. So you're going to have a better idea at any time what your number is. So we fixed that this year. That was one of the suggestions. I know the last couple years we, you know, we used to have it as much as fifty thousand. Yeah, and I dropped it by forty-five to forty to thirty-five. You know. And so that's what I did this year. We had said that in the past yeah. we were going to drop it five every year, so I did. And um, even though, and, and it's funny because you could come in and pay, and we say, okay, say you missed your November payment, and you were late. So when you come in, once we charge interest, the system will call you delinquent, but you're not technically delinquent until you miss your May 15th payment, and we assess your penalty. So, um, but it will be a little cleaner once you once it starts coming out of one line, and we'll start budgeting just. Uh, probably just a number for taxes. But I did drop it by five because that's what you said you want to do every year. So. And do we have any other properties 
up for tax sale? We currently are not, we don't have, I'm not in the process of doing a tax Nothing. sale right now. So no anticipated tax sale revenue for this budget? Um, maybe. I just can't tell you because I don't, uh, it's a study. Like Dietrich just came on. We've been obviously out doing the interim and then Dietrich came on. Now she's doing some collections. So I have a couple, we, we know a couple of properties that we will probably would go for tax sale if we're going to hold it right now. But she just, you know, had written all the letters to the banks and then called the banks back to see if they'd taken any action. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to get some things wrapped up and some people paying off because we've got some pressure with some of the banks. When we cleaned up, I mean, we put 40 some odd up for tax sale the first time. And mm -hmm. remember then we moved down at 11 and I sold mine as a, as a, I do have a lead on one of those, by the way, that might sell for private sale. Um, so I don't know, I don't want to budget for it because I don't know, and if we do, Probably won't be until the summer or early fall before we do a tax sale. Okay. Where is this revenue that we want? <clears throat> we anticipate to have on the uh, Sugar Hill property. Where's that go? Where's it? Beyond our current budget. This year. Yeah, beyond our current budget. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> what? On the what plan? Well, what I would have you do is deposit that money into your capital. We expensed out in your capital, um, but you did in a prior year. The only thing we expense, mm -hmm. expense somehow, I can go back and look at the bills that you've paid this year for legal mm -hmm. out of that, and you're 20 bucks a month for electric. We, so we could take what you expended out in this fiscal year and put it in as miscellaneous revenue. But I would say take the rest of the proceeds and put it in your capital building fund because with the state of the town office and the town garage. You'd be smart to save that money. We're allowed to do that. Ah, oh, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be my recommendation. So, <clears throat> do you have any other questions on revenue? Um, I didn't. Does anybody else have any revenue questions? I know the revenue is usually the easier piece of the budget because <laughs> it doesn't change the whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sure exactly you do. Revenue. You see if the expenses are and just That's raise right. the revenues up. Yeah. <laughs> do you see how we do that? Oh, no. yeah. Each one's laid out so we know how the revenue is all equal. <laughs> It'll just stick in there and number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'll look fun. So, yeah. Okay. And we got the constable's department. So I see that slightly down. I didn't monkey much with it, frankly. It just took the existing same budget, 20 hours a week. Um, you know, workers' comp, the insurance. So I dropped the cruiser a little bit because from 3,000 to 2,500 because I figured you'd have, you know, it's newer, so I that it had done regular maintenance and everything else I kept the same. No retirement? No, he doesn't need retirement because he is already participating in the same in a retirement program in royalty. Once he went there full time, yeah, they call from the state no, and they're like, "Wait, he can't be in Beamers and Beasters." I'm like, "Well, what do you want to do here?" Mm -hmm. So basically, she just needed him to agree to go into one, mm -hmm. and he was like, "All right." So that's why. But if we do bring in a second constable, you know, there may be a little bit there. So, but I don't know. It depends where he works. Because right. if he has a full-time job right. as a police right. officer right. somewhere else, because right. Oscar made an appointment to bring in somebody who might be interested in the second constable. And I said, bring him in on the him first before they even fill out the resume. Let's see what we got in work. <laughs> no, no sense in wasting their time. So we'll see, and you obviously had the price for the VSP last time. So, you know, it really depends. You're either going to have a constable or two constables, or you're going to have a VSP or something. Either way, you're going to you're going to continue to police that. You're going to have you know forty right. grand paying somebody. Mm -hmm. So Still I left the cruiser funder because you were already on a schedule for five thousand, and we put that in the town court last year. Mm -hmm. So um, do we have a status update on the other cruiser? Yep, he has, he's, he, he has an offer. So he's bought, he has a new one, he's already paid for, he's picked it up, it's insured. And then he has, I think he's gonna sell the other one for five grand. Okay. So that will That's also go back in the month. Yeah. So. Well, well, we're almost getting back what we paid. <laughs> yeah, you paid 74, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. We've thrown, we've thrown 20 in right in front of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like going on a boat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Buying scratch tickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions on that one? Parks and public places. So this one changed. Um, oh, this is zero percent. Oh no, I guess it worked out to be the same, which was a little weird. Yeah, it was weird. It was weird. I think I went back twice to do the math. So this was a change in Richard's salary a little bit in the scope. We kind of looked at how it actually had worked over the years. Over the years, see, originally we started with X amount of hours when Morgan took this position. Um, started this position when Greg had it, created it. We had X amount of highway, X amount of water, X amount of parks, and then we kind of tweaked the all years to figure out what are they actually working where so we can move it around in a little bit more a fair representation. So that's why this one, the majority of this budget had changed. Street lights are down a little bit, um, and maybe because, they, because of the wattage bulbs or something, maybe, I don't know, they've got a reduction in this, in the, like certainly the rate didn't drop. Didn't, but you, didn't you change some of them over to LED? I thought they were. I think it changed. Yeah. It changed them all. Eight, Eight or nine. Yeah. But that wasn't supposed to. We weren't going to get a discount on that, were we? Well, they won't. Um, I don't know. It's just maybe it's usage. Just kind of the usage. Yeah, just maybe usage. So, so we you have. You pay about a kilowatt hour for our street lights. Yeah. The, the lights that bring out the power change LED, you pay a flat mm -hmm. fee. Yeah. Once they're still on the wooden pole. The street lights up and down the street, you pay for the electric control. Mm -hmm. And I drop flags and poles because the only person I ever pay out of here is um, Neil Fox. And he's kept his bill has been about the same. He just orders them from someone and brings me the actual bill. There's no markup on it. So yeah, it ended up being the exact same budget. And I remember going back thinking there was a, a mistake. And um, so that was kind of a fluke. Um, what part of the budget were we putting the uh, the garden work into? That's in the um, that's the notification. No, I think that's yeah, that's it. Parks and he's right. Yeah, no, that's sorry. that's it. He's right. Yeah, that's there. a funny thing. Yes, yeah, so that was the uh -huh. lady and gentleman. So we left that in. We didn't do much with it this year because yeah. obviously we had the street torn up. It wasn't going to be a good. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I had a question. Maybe Linda knows, but so the the banners that we have on the light poles. Mm -hmm. Now I know the banners that are currently up. Well, anyways, my daughter's and I found one that was on the ground the other day. <laughs> so we brought it and gave it a tree. Looking at it, it's great. Right. And, and you know, what, I know we had two sets, right? Yes, we actually, we had gotten two sets. The first set, they're supposed to be a no fade fabric. And the first set faded within six months. Okay. And so we went back to the company, showed them how badly they faded, and they gave us another two sets. Okay. So now there are. So we have. We have. So you might have found one because I know there was one on the bridge. That one had blew off the bridge. Yeah. And it was of the original set, and so if it looks super old, they're not actually that older. About a year. Yeah, it looks pretty years, faded. but it's. So it's I can get. I can throw that one out. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't know what. Like, were we at the point where Dave, we tours more or? Dave Sambor might have the set that came down, and one of our thoughts was like to do to auction them off. As a fundraiser, okay, then I will it out. So we could, you know, I mean, if it looks really crummy because it's been driven you know, blown, over. <laughs> blown around and driven over, yeah, uh, it, it's probably not worth keeping. Yeah, I'll take it looks really crummy, but I, I could check with Dave. I think he had kept the the original set that was super faded. We were thinking about. So I'll come next spring. We should be able to put one of the new sets. Or yeah, and the idea is to trade them out because they. They actually fade faster if they're just sun exposed all the time, so you get, kind of give them a rest in them. And so I think it should be probably figured out with the, with the road crew of like you know, trading them out once a year. Or, you know. Do we? How much does one set of those cost? Do you know? That's a good question. I, did you I get them? Did you did we count them? No, no, it was. Uh, or don't. Yeah, it was BRI, BRI did a grant that got them. Um, Lily actually priced them. I can find yeah. them. Yeah, because I mean, I I know I've gotten a lot of good feedback over the couple of years with them, so it yeah. seems like people in the town would like to see those even, whatever, when we run out of any sets of them. But it would be maybe something to have <clears throat> information on uh, how much a set does cost and, right. 
you know, do we need to put something in the budget? And part, we, part of me is thinking maybe two sets were around 3,200, but I might be making that number up. Um, the two, two sets and it's 16 per set. I believe it's 16 per set, so I think it was right around there, but I'll check with Wiley and see. We did also, we, we had, um, when we were waiting for those to come in, we had um, local kids make a bunch of holiday ones, and okay. they're not like, they're just sort of generic wintery mm -hmm. themed um, snowmen and snowflakes and stuff. I thought it was a winter set. Yeah, and I don't, I, Rebecca might have those, uh, but they're around. They I think gone I around. have them. Oh, maybe, okay. Because we have a set, and I put them in a tote, and I, I, somebody brought them in, and they're in a tote, and I'm pretty sure they're, that we have them. Yeah. Because that's what I was thinking. I mean, because that's the other option, is those could get traded out, and then the other new set goes up in the spring, and just trade them out that way, because, yeah, they're around. And I think it, was, it came down to we just didn't know how to get them up on the pool without quietly doing it ourselves, which well, we, were told we were not supposed to do. I thought that they borrowed somebody's boom truck, or do you know? Well, Doug, Doug helped Doug us with the first one. Yeah, we're all we're all kind of boom truck for the long and then, but did you do it when you were the, as a volunteer? Yeah. I feel like you did it as on a Saturday or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I know we've got, like, you know, with the construction going on this year, it's kind of a, you know, we didn't paint the crosswalks. We did, you know, a lot of things. And mm -hmm. Just be nice to make sure we're all set for you don't want to paint next the year that, you know, we can get back to normal in the downtown, you know, so. Well, next year, so we're going to have more construction than next year. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Not, not as much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we made it as far as we're going to make it for the year, okay. which is right here. They did the connection to Janice Plunger, and they were waiting. When I talked to Tim this morning, we were waiting to hear from the CEO or whatever of the credit union because when they dug that, they found two half inch lines coming out of that building, <laughs> which nobody could, you know. They, yeah, so they're well, like, all right, we just need one service line going in, but yeah. the credit union needs to do that work because they're on that side of the curb stop. So was it, was it one for the, the apartment building and one for the We we don't know, but room. they only need one connection so we were so they're waiting for them to say, Okay, we'll do the plumbing on our side, we'll fix it and then connect on yours. It was trenched open still. So but those will be the final because lots of smarts we're gonna dig this year. And okay. obviously we're paving the paper's supposed to come Wednesday and do some preliminary work and so I have two questions on the parks and public places. Yeah. Um, so one was uh, the stone wall out here was in pretty rough shape last year, looking even worse now. And I'm just wondering if we're considering budgeting repair of that. I mean, it's starting to now just look derelict. Yeah, I've been trying to find someone to do the work. You haven't asked any of the cops to do, no, do that? No, I don't because we were waiting to get through there because of the vibrating bucket and the vibrating right. roll. I wasn't sure what, what was the, going on when they were done. For next but I tried to get somebody to look at it. What was the gentleman was that did the one too by Too small of a job. He didn't want to look at it, but I had to look at name. Okay, Great I can also. Great I already went down this road with the two guys. Yeah, I, I can reach out to a couple. Uh, but I have somebody else too okay. that I could get. But we were waiting because and if they're going to be running the vibrating bucket and the vibrating roller again, I just wasn't sure if we should just wait till it's done. I also. Or they should get an estimate of how much they think it might cost. Oh, we we had long. somebody come in and do work on that wall what, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And they got years. Several years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, what were we talking about? The, the, one, the, one, the nice stone wall, yeah. like the whole section by the staircase is just falling out from under itself. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So, we could add some more money in there for that and see if we could get some of it done maybe over two years, get some of it done. Because at the same time, when they were down here digging at, right out in front of the building, uh, Tim had pointed out to me, he said, You're not usually standing in front of town hall all day. <laughs> but they noticed that the the mortar out of your bricks, so it needs to be repointed in a few places. So um, I was like, okay, thanks. So he pointed that out, so we could we take care of that. But, so we could add some money in here well, maybe for we'll that. Well, maybe get some sort of ballpark estimate on that, and we can talk about either doing it one year or over two years, or? Yeah. Yes, Lisa. Can you, that little bit of stone wall that's between the laundromat and the old Richardson's building, you know, that little space that's there that's yeah. pretty much falling out of the Right, well, and that's just a 
dry lit wall. That's what is that? Huh? That's private property. Yeah, that's a dry lit wall. That's not. It's not like this one it's where it's like actually covered in. Okay, um, and that's so that that bit of land isn't. Um, I don't think that's property. property. Well, the other thing too is we have the three thousand. I think it's whoever owns the. Um, well, that's Richardson. The, that's the uh, laundromat right. or Richardson. the building, right? Yeah. Okay, so that belongs to Leon Ryan. Uh, the right, the uh, Crowley. Crowley, yeah. Okay. The other thing too is we have three thousand in the parks education this year, which we know we're not even going to use by June. So maybe we'll see how much we can, how much it costs to get some of that redone out of there. Maybe we can get a little repair this year and a little next. But um, so I have. Maybe could you email me the names you have? Yeah, I'd have to reach out, but there's I have a whole network of people through yes tomorrow, and there's definitely masonry classes there that I can okay. I can reach out to <coughs> the masonry folks in Vermont and just see yeah. who they come up with for because I know there's a, a guy in Rochester um, locally that want to have a little project. But well, because that's the other thing. Like sometimes <laughs> yes tomorrow is looking for projects. Like that's right. we got our building repointed because they needed a brick building to oh, do some perfect. restoration work on, and so. Well, you can tell now you have two things. You have a brick building. Yes. Yeah. Repointing. So, well, and and the guy who who does those classes is the state brick historian. Oh, really? And he still does classes. They have oh, to okay. they have to actually fill for them to run a class. And so this year's got canceled, obviously. But um, he's always looking for projects. Nice. To do. So yeah. So yeah, you could reach out to him and just let me know. Yeah, maybe maybe we're we can yeah, this whole building. Just have to all yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all you have to do is put up the students and feed them. Easy. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Um, my other question on this was. Um, and it's sort of still also related to the parking lot, but I think it, it's not exclusive to the parking lot, which was um, when Morgan was doing like a regular mowing and things, this whole section looked a lot nicer. And I've noticed this year and, and a little bit last year, because it's not mowed as frequently, people just chuck trash into it. Okay. And so now it's just full of trash. Okay. And so it's one of those, you know, I've noticed an uptick in the amount of trash just generally around the parking lot area. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and so I was just kind of wondering if we want to think about it, you know, because we're trying to do a lot of the revitalization efforts, but I think a lot of that has to, we have to put in some energy to, to clean this keeping up. it looking nice. So this nice. one is getting mowed as often. Okay. I, well, that was my question, was it okay. didn't seem like it was. Awesome. And this is, I don't know, if, Jason, if you know, because I, I was thinking it was part of this budget, but I wasn't really sure when when Morgan left, and you know, it was like I wasn't sure how that all. Came. So clean up trash around municipal parking lot because I don't think I ever got cleaned back at all. So no. Okay. So right. It got it got once, and it was relatively recently. It was like whenever the town mowing. Oh well, he came up and did. Um, he cut some brush over here, and maybe he did that. He may not have known, maybe. because if he wasn't told to do that, he wouldn't right. have known to do it. So I'll make a note to clean up the trash around municipal parking lot, keep mowed and trimmed in the future. And um, But we also, Chris and I talked about the fact that we're going to have to redo this parking lot. Mm -hmm. said something well, at some point we have to. Yeah, but I can talk to them about him about that for the spring, so he knows that he needs to maintain it. Because we did have a gentleman who was watering the plants and doing things like that this year, okay. and Paul was fixing up a bench for three, three benches. benches. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Yeah, because the parking lot, if we don't do something here in the next couple of years, then we're gonna get to the point where we'll have to take it down the dirt tree. You right. know, so right now it's at the point where. It could get overlaid and just be nice and functional. Right. Could you and not cost as much? You know, we yeah. can blend it in with something okay. else. You know, could you but, write me? Um, could, do, would you be able to give me shoot me an estimate on what that should be? I mean, maybe I can pack it in next year with these guys coming back to town. Yeah, I don't, like I said before, I would try to group it in with like one well, word. You know, I mean, like so if you have a page on the command, you want to group. Well, I'm Small wear with big wear. You know, I'm thinking when they price. come in next spring to re to finish the water project, would we want a price from them? I think the price would be too high. Even as they're here to do the water project? Yeah. I okay. think you need to try to only do some. Well, if we did. Like, let's say, if, if we did see an LP and pay us the same time, you get a better price. Okay. Yeah. So we'll look at that because we're going to do, we do Sandhill, Graham, and that. Okay. I was just curious how much that would. Can you just email me how much you could do? Yeah, no, I can do this. No. For an overlay piece, just so I can add it to my capital road plan. Yeah. But I'll make a note one to clean up trash around this side, like the mode and trim on the backside. This parking lot here is 100% outer 
responsibility? Does the bank have any responsibility to any of that park lawn? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. I just thought that they were allowed so many spaces. That right. I guess. I don't know. I think, they, uh, I think they gifted that, what they had owned, they gifted that to the town. Okay. Right. So it's 100% of the town, just part of the agreement was that they get so many park lawn. Yeah, that's part of the so I'll, I'll make a note on here too about the um, Lindley about the um, Sloan Wall because I'm aware of it. We just were kind of gone. Right. Well, and I forgot about that we decided we weren't going to deal with it this year because of the. And, I'm, and now they're going to be back. I'm not sure. Right. Maybe we could next when they're done. done. But I'll right. make a note. Stone Wall. Yeah, like if it could go in September. Or... Right. Didn't we have somebody that was going to do that and up on Cherry Hill? That stone wall up there. Yeah. Wasn't no. that a couple years ago? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, we know we didn't no. put money in for Cherry Hill right. Cemetery. But I thought that. Yeah, there was a discussion about, about the stone wall. Right, we were doing Hill. both projects. Uh, I, I not, vaguely uh, remember that. Yeah, we talked about mm -hmm. going to put some money in to build, build up some money because the, it was going to be so expensive. I think the only price we get at that point was from Greg. And the cost was just as right. yeah. so we put some money to start building some money. In we the put room. money in the cemetery line for it, and right. so Cecil's going to work on it in the spring, and I think he's found somebody local he's going to approach to help him with it because he got prices and he said it was so ridiculous, and a lot of them keep telling him to rebuild the whole wall, and he's like, I don't need to rebuild the whole wall, I just need to do the section. Mm -hmm. So he's going to try to do it because he knows his money goes away from the third gate. Because um, that was under cemeteries, mm -hmm. but you're right. So, anyways, we'll track someone down and see what we can do. But I, um, Tim, when he was over here, he sent me a picture of it. <laughs> He's like, basically going to fix this. And I'm like, yeah, we can get done. But not until, <laughs> because what would be the point? You're just going to shake it some more. <laughs> but I'll put it on there, Lindley, and, cool. and follow that. And I'll talk to Richard too about the parking lot. Yeah. So, thank you for that. I didn't know that was not happening. So, or that it needed to happen. So, we'll talk to him. <clears throat> So do you have anything else on parks and public places? Uh, I don't think so. Anybody else? No. Mm -hmm. So then there's the municipal office. I don't... Let's see if I went back to the next one. The building maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> I dropped it because we, we have... They're just, it's all bad news. I have no good news about the town hall office, except, except that the upgrade of the electrical, and I got the price, and we got insulation coming on the 20th, and I got the gentleman there is now doing some work to put in the new door and stuff, but I got the bad news that the, um, the CV oil came, there's some set of doors that were open to this big tank. I was always told, and we all believe in the office was an tank. It's a 10,000 gallon fuel tank. So they smelled fuel because those doors had been shut for a long time and then they're open, they got a real big wave of fuel. So when they came up and Tim was like, look, Trace, this smells like raw fuel. This isn't burnt fuel. Great. So we called Harper Environmental. They came down and checked it out and said, look, you don't have a leak, but what you have, and we got a portion of it open so they could see um, but you're gonna kind of hole into this top thing because it was so rusted you couldn't get into it. And he said, look, it has sludge in it. So you have three choices. So choice number one is leave it alone and wait for it to leak. And I'm like, but I bet Anna loves that choice. And uh, two is to air open, cut open the entire floor, cut open the tank, clean the tank, and, and you leave it there. Or three is pull the tank out. So, not much needs to be done tomorrow, but when you add that into the bigger picture, that now that we know that all the fat, all the uh, soffit and fascia is rotted, the deck of the roof is rotted, um, and we know we need to strip the siding. So basically now we know that the town hall office needs, which is fine, we could, that deck, that garage, for lack of a better term of what, what it was originally, is a mess anyway. It's um, all rotted, and you can see the old metal siding under there. Tim wants to move that hydrant. You know, we have talked about if we ever did that, which was to just tear the whole thing down. You could actually make more parking there. But um, so now we're looking at a whole different thing. Now we're looking at okay, we need a new roof, we need new siding, we need you know basically the whole outer shell of the building needs 
to be redone. And we need to pull a 10,000 tank out the ground. So um, the good news was, yeah, that it was leaking. And, um, but the, so I said, forget it. I'm just going to drop building maintenance because that's, come on, that's not, we're going to have to look at, I, you know, I, still, I got the engineering part of the town garage, which is still our number one priority. So I have that, and then we have the town hall. We're going to, I just need to get to the bulb and look at the capital building and kind of look at what we're going to do next. So I said, why increase this budget? Because it's crazy, you know. I can't do anything that I need to do for that type of money. <laughs> so I just dropped it and said, eh, just drop it and wait and see what, when I pull the route out of my hat and figure out how we're going to build two buildings. Um, so that's why I lowered it all. Yeah. So what are we anticipating the increase in the health insurance benefits? <coughs> so, yeah, I still, I, I did the same as I did last year. So I have the new rates. So we know what we know what the actual rates are for, and I think it was a. What were we at this year? Seven point two. I don't remember now. Percent increase off, you know. And then I did the same thing I was doing. I know the actuals for six months, and then I increase it by. I think we've done twelve. I did twelve percent, and um, for the other six months. Also, the HRA changed. So, which we have a chunk of the plan, it was 2700 last year for a family and 1400 if you were single. This year it went to 1500 if you're single and 3000 for the family plan. So the HRA increased also. So this is representation of the increase in the HRA and the, um, you know, a possible increase in health insurance for the last six months. I also had gotten, in the beginning, I only funded the HRA liability at 70%, but I've gotten so in the last couple of years, like two years, this is the second year, I think I budgeted for the whole HRA liability, which is you're saying everybody spends the first three grand. I, that way, if there's a little the extra, so be it. But um, I think that they have gone to the state with a, with a bigger increase. I think they got 7.2. I'm sorry, I don't have that. So that's how I budget the, the health insurance. And um, then we, I finally got someone from Green Backer, Green Maple, reached out to us finally. And we reallocated the money from the, um, that we pay each month. So when it says GB equals, that's what that is. It's Green Backer, that's our percentage of workers' comp. Um, lease in the copy or penny bows, all that. So it's a 1.36% increase over last year. So I figure, like anything, we just go through it, and then once you see the bigger picture, we can go back and go through the whole thing at once. So, Forest Town Hall, which is down. Um, Building repair, I dropped a little bit because we budgeted for some stuff that I think we can still get done in the spring. Out of the six grand, like getting the windows washed. I think Paul and I have talked about that. And, um, so I think that's really the only, oh, and the heat. Yeah, just, I think just the price of heat, we'd save money, so I dropped that by looking at the last couple of years. So it was the savings in heat and building repair. And we have a contract with the clock man to come every year, and he should be coming pretty soon. <coughs> Government operations are up, and the reason, so there's a couple of things here. Um, I talked to Louise and Judy. We talked a little bit about um, the reappraisal and the reappraisal coming. So you can see I did increase that. I decreased legal because we hadn't been using it, knock on wood. And then um, I had, um, so I increased from 5,000 to 20,000, which is obviously, I just threw it in there for now to see what the whole budget looks like. But the reappraisal is coming. So five grand is nice, but 
It's really not. We need to put more away. How much so, we got in the kitty now? I, you know what? I can't. I don't know off the top of my head. No, I'm sorry. I didn't write the number in here for myself, but I'll look and tell you next time. Can we think what it's, it's going to be? What's the, what's the projected of, of a reappraisal? Oh, I bet you're going to spend, I would say, 250 or more. Yeah. We have yeah. half of it. Okay, that's, I, I was just looking for something ballpark. Well, we just started it. Actually, I started this reappraisal it's fund last year. Yeah, and then you had or the reappraisal fund. We got to, you know, we've had one because we were just putting your act, whatever money in it. Yeah. So um, that's in here. I left the capital improvement. Reserve fund as a capital building fund. I left that alone for now until I can figure out the town garage stuff. Then in bold, you can see where it says Energy Committee 7 Grand Discussion Regarding Options here. I actually, that is the Better Connections Grant. And my advice for this coming budget is to forget about it. Because I talked to Rita at Two Rivers and she said you can get the Better Connections Grant. But if we're going to be next year finishing this water project, we're going to be planning on Sand Hill. We're trying to go for the transportation or for this other grant, this 300000 We still got to come up with our match there. She said, look, you can get the Better Connections grant anytime. And part of that, um, you know, was I think they were looking at whatever they were originally looking at had closed off the table. Now, um, Rebecca and Nicole were talking about other things. And well, we've, we've, we've point, certainly we've, have. We've got to deal with the infrastructure. We've budgeted like three or four years in a row. It's yeah. Nowhere at this point. So my thought was take it out and just, you know, I mean, if you, even if you were going to do pedestrian improvements, for us, that's great and I want to see that done, but for right now, I think we've got to fix what's in the ground. We've got to deal with our infrastructure, our stormwater, our paving, and then we can do some of those. And um, so my suggestion is take it out of the budget, as much as I hate to say that, because I was originally thinking I could write better connections and use it for safe routes to school to do the piece from, um, Church Street to the school and put in signage for the trails and kind of package that all as one thing so people could park at the school if they needed parking if there wasn't the wreck and you signed for the trails. And, but <clears throat> then when I, we started looking at Sand Hill and all that, I'm like, all right, this is baby steps. Like, what's the priority here would be the road and the stormwater and the water versus the and the town garage versus the sidewalk from church to the school at this point. Um, There's a note in the Energy Committee minutes, though, about the $70,000 grant they're going to apply for. Yeah, I think it's the better, it's the better, better connections, connections grant. Connection. And I had told, I emailed Nicole and Rebecca and said, okay. look, I think that we can use this for perhaps a safe okay. to school, but we're looking at alternatives and then, so, I mean, it's seven grand, and it's, yeah. so it's, for me, it's like, if we're going to apply for the 300, we could put it toward the 75 that we have to come up with if we get that, or mm -hmm. I just feel like there's higher priorities right now than, and I hate to say that, but that's my opinion. I don't know how anybody else feels, but. I, I would take it out. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, for now. it's like, uh, um, But I had a couple of questions, so um, one on legal, and I know, you know, we, you know, we got all screwed up there about four years ago when we went through that big legal battle mm -hmm. with the water stuff. Yeah. So that's when we kind of said, oh, we got to budget more money in the legal and mm -hmm. things. But would it be, and, and then since then we've, you know, not used legal much. Not much, no. I mean, would it be wiser because it seems like legal is, like, most of the time it's nothing, and then all of a sudden you have something big that yep. pops up. It's true. And the way we're budgeting right now, it's only for a, a budgeted year. So if you budget right, you're not 15 grand, and that's just 15 grand for that year. And if right. the next year all of a sudden you have a big legal battle at $60,000, yeah. you're going to have a huge spike. Helping you. Yeah. I mean, would it be helpful if at this point the legal piece, we somehow make like a legal fund that we can move that money from one year to the other and we just budget legal? So that all of a sudden if we have a large legal battle, we can deal with it without having to increase the tax rate mm -hmm. or I don't know, I mean just was thinking that because if you look at the other ones, you know, thirty five hundred, two thousand this year, you know, so it's right. well under, but at some point we might need that money if we have to Yeah, because usually if you're you know, um for the most part if you're 
dealing with passive and you let them know like what's going on and take advantage of some of their services, they'll cover a lot of your stuff. In your case, when it was the water, they weren't going to cover that. But I don't think that's a bad idea. You can't idea. really anticipate You can't. You know, it no. just, it'll happen and then you got to defend yourself, right? Sure. That's a good idea. I don't um, know. You put it in there if you don't use it, it's gone. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and, and we can manage it. And I mean, for us, we, we know what we're well, if, we, if we had a fund there, and let's yeah. say, I don't know, 10 years down the road, we have $100,000 in it, and we want to decide to move some of that money into something else, you could. And Build we should state have state something. Or pay for legal battles in secret. I'm sorry, it's not Because, I mean, I was going back and I was looking at that. I went back through all the. Town reports. town reports that I had, and we only had two times in the 14 years that I've been here that we've had like kind of a larger legal thing. Yeah. And all the other times it's kind of small. Yeah, because so, you knew you had one for water, and I imagine you had one for Dollar General because you would have had to go to environmental court, right. and they're not going to cover that. So it makes so, sense that you would have had those are the two yeah. I can think of. Well, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and then yeah. if you have you have that build up reserve, you could budget less in a given year. Absolutely. No, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Need to, yeah. Do it every single yeah. time. Yeah, I like that idea. So, I run that way. Yeah. And then I had the other. I was going to pick on trees, but <laughs> and I think I know the answer. But so we we had the audit services where we were out of control there for a while, and then we got the three year agreement with yeah, and I them, which was twenty two thousand. And then all of a sudden, I see it's rising up and up and up again. Well, it is because you. And I know some of this. I don't think we had to. I'm the guy started it right now. Because wasn't the agreement we had was like a three-year deal and yeah. like a like fixed amount or something. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, something like that. It's a fixed amount at the point when they're doing additional bookkeeping, they're going to charge you for it. Right. So um, three nine two six is he came in June. And he was only here for a couple of days. And he was very happy. But don't for, let us not forget that we have to pay the seven at least. I think it's well, I know there's probably some seven. FEMA like, stuff that we. Yeah, well, we have to have a single audit because of all the damage in April, plus we have the DWSRF, which is this money that we're doing now for the 2.8 million, puts us in the position where we have to do the um, single audit, which is not budgeted for because we didn't, you know, well, we, we had tried, Rick had thought we could get the money out of FEMA or Federal Highway, so they both said no. I don't know if DWSRF, if there's any in the 2.8 million that was gonna cover any portion of an audit if we had to have a single audit. But so that's not here this year. So so far we're good. I don't think I. I'm not sure I budgeted last year. So it's yeah. creeping up again. It is. Yeah. Well, it was twenty two nine sixty five, and I, I'm not sure I had the right number. If that would have been twenty, maybe that should have been twenty one something. But twenty two, and then we're at three nine two six, and I had to find the contract. And honestly. then on the. Uh, So on the revenue side, we didn't budget for any tax sales, but on the cost side, we budgeted costs for tax sales. Well, tax sales not going to give you any. The revenue, the revenue for tax sale is. And I was just looking at it. Talking about this. Reimburse tax sale expense. Is that what you're? Uh, I wouldn't budget any money for that anyways because I don't know what that's going to be. Um, and let me look under property tax. Yeah, there's no, but I was just we don't budget a revenue for tax sale because this just it costs you money. Not the cost of things. It and costs you money. But I'd like to do a tax sale within that calendar year. Okay. So within 21, 22. So let's just look at some of the previous year's costs and we haven't really spent a whole lot of money. No, because we only, the year that we did do a tax sale, it was almost five grand. Mm -hmm. And so then, um, this year, I don't know, between this year and that, we will do a tax sale in here. And it, may, and it won't be probably as much because I won't anticipate calling them up and telling them I have 40 some odd properties. I'm only going to have mm -hmm. a few. But you don't budget a, a revenue because the revenue would be doing what taxes that we get back um, that are outstanding now. So. But one thing I did see in there that we may want to take a little better look at is the advertising. Yes. If you go back and look at advertising, we pretty much have beaten our advertising budget. We here. have. And I would say, you know, we are still looking for someone Rogue. from the highway department. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a constable, there's, mm -hmm. you know. And well, then there's all those pieces that will come up at some point, right? And that's exactly what happens. We may want to figure in just a little bit more into the advertisement. Yep. I do um, that. Seems like we always. We do. We do. And um, 
And then what was the, uh, I couldn't find it in my notes, shame on me, but um, someone had come to the board asking for some monies. The Conservation Commission wants to grant, or no, Mary came on Ford Fest for two grants. Ford Fest, yes. I put that in already. Okay. Uh, you don't see that, I didn't give you that piece, but I did add Oh, oh I didn't know if it was one of the No, it's, it's oh, okay, in gotcha. um, the appropriation. Gotcha, okay. But yeah, she came. Okay. So, I guess we want to make that five for advertising. I mean, well, it was going back and, you know, 19, yeah, we had 58, and I think the year prior to that we had like 55, or it was like close to six, or okay. I think one year back there was like seven. Of course, you know, we've had like town manager searches. Town manager searches for um, that's probably the most, and we did, right. you know, we did two of those in a three year span, so that was kind of. Yeah, well, I, I, I'll put 5,500 with a question mark, and I'll take this seven out, because we'll add it somewhere later. Uh, we'll find the contract for the powers, and then I'll make a note for reserve fund for legal capital, and then I have a note here for the balance and the reappraisal fund. And then based upon what we have for, um, you know, going forward with the uh, public works building and, and or municipal building, <laughs> See where that capital improvement fund number yeah. oh, needs to be um, adjusted. Exactly. Because I did get the report back from Carl Isles, and um, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. So I do have that. I mean, one would assume that at this point, if we were to move forward with a, a new structure or a rehabilitated structure, that that would probably come in like a single vote. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. pro but we probably some of these issues with the municipal building to get it through the next ten or fifteen years yeah. probably come under this fund. So. Yeah. So they both. Yeah. So we'll look at it because I, I he sent me a couple of emails and then I got his report and um, he found some interesting things. Like I thought the piece that then was out back, you know, where the, the previous people built. So that's not. Um, I guess that wasn't like a full proper slab, it was just like a five inch and like, oh, all right, so, so that would come out and be really Yeah. Left over packs. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, back oh, so that's that. So, that, but, uh, so anyways, we're going to take a look at, I'll read it and then have a better idea of what we're going to. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I would assume that whatever we do with the building up there would have an effect on this budget here because we would probably go to the bond mode. Yeah. For yeah. yeah. Um, but whatever needs to be done on the municipal building would, you know, I know. would be carried under that fund. Well, I'll have a better idea for you for the next meeting, so what we're dealing with. And then the um, thing about the town abroad, you can kind of look at the package and then the possibility of putting the additional pay as like option A, so we can see how much the whole thing is, and then this is option B, A, so we could maybe see right. if we can do it separately. But, I don't know, we have a, there's a couple of questions up there too about the, um, we need to have a septic pump and uh, up there, we to do that this year, but we can, it's not done yet, so we're going to get that done. But I'll read his report and we'll have a better idea, I'll give that to you in the packet and we'll see what's going okay. but that's still, in my mind, remains the So what pieces will we see right? next time, um, the rest of it? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not promising anything. I'm still going to be with the board. I just want to get it on the record. <laughs> I just want to be with the board. I would hope to have fire and recreation. Maybe. Maybe public works. I don't know. I, like I said, I just started going through numbers and asking some questions. and I try to give them each, everybody a draft budget. I'll give fire, rec, and public works a draft. And then just kind of do these expenses and see. What, what, what? When's the Appropriations Committee going to be meeting? Uh, start your process. Yeah, is that November or December? Yeah, December? Everything is due the um, 1st of December, or we'll request, and yeah. we usually meet that first week in December. All the things efficient. They <laughs> So we'll see. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, so my hope is, yeah, in a perfect world, we'll see the rest. But that's um, how the so anything further on the pieces of the budget we were looked at today? Not just the beginning. Uh, 
in the last, uh, last item for the evening, we've had, uh, the school had reached out to us in regards to thoughts of the town of Bethel taking over the plowing and winter maintenance of the parking lot. Yeah, it was a Bob Gray. Is that right, Dave? Is that the right name? Mm -hmm. Bob Gray. Yeah, so he called and he's on the committee, so is Louise, and he asked if they had a contract, I guess they put it out to bid and they had like a $58,000 contract. And so he asked if, he's like, well, it'd be nice if the town would take over a plowing school. We asked the sucker, and I'm like, yes, but I would say probably no. And uh, I'm like, look, you know, we have the manpower to take over doing the school. And what it, He's like, well, they're the same budget. I said, no, they're not the same budget. You have a different budget than we do. And so I said, I don't know. I said, I'll ask the school. And maybe, I think in the past, we've done it. Did we, ever plow, did we ever do winter maintenance at the school, Doug? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So the same time, we did do the school. But the, the agreement that I understood that if we did it, we charged the school every time that we had done it. And for and but for, and again, that was never turned in every time that we did. So I eventually faded away from doing that. Yeah. But we had done it in the past, and we had kept up with, with uh, plowing it and, and salt it. Yeah. But that was when all three trucks would go down at one time, knock it out, and then we go do our route. Yeah. And then if one truck would come back in, then that would knock a path off, and then we just kept rotating it back and forth. Doing stuff. But then once we got it done, it was done. But every time we did it, we had to keep time and turn it in. But I don't know if that time ever got turned in. And then I did question about that. And I was, was told that the time was not turned in. You were on the receiving end of that, though. You were on the receiving end of that. No, I don't receive anything. It sounds like nothing got turned in. Yeah, so um, he was, they were also going to ask for us to take over the world and school. But I would think, no, I mean, their budget's bigger, and I mean, you were saying too, they have, they can absorb something like that. For us, that's well. I think the first thing is just you know, right now we're a person down at the public works building anyway, yeah. so you know you'd be taking on more responsibility with the less person to begin with. So I guess that makes it yeah. kind of difficult now. And why would you want to take on the liability of plowing that? I mean, the roads, you know, we own, but why would you want to take on the liability of plowing? Property that the school owns. Private property. You know, and then. Well, my you know, something. Well, I mean, if we had enough people, I mean, we'd charge them 58,000 a little bit. Yeah, we'd have to do it. 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 We could only do the parking lot basically like one, that one time. Sure. Yeah. And then it, the smaller truck would come by and try to just keep the path open for the bus. Yeah. Or something like that. But before doing the whole, trying to keep it all open for the parking lot. Since they consolidated, as Dave said, it's private property now. It doesn't have anything to do with the town of Bethel. Yeah, so I told him that I wouldn't get his hopes up if I was him. So he had it's all open. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see the road for one that he did that. It's not in the budget. It costs budget. Budget. this budget anyway. No. Right. I would say no one Well, I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, the thought would be is if we, if we were in a good position and had enough manpower that we could charge the school well, for he, he was time, like Doug was saying, you know, your time is whatever, X amount of hours. Or well, we can exactly charge them 59000 <laughs> Yeah, we'll counter off. It will be 57 nine. He was looking <laughs> for us to do it for no, for right. yeah, Well, they should have consolidated then. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing like I was telling Therese is the difference is if you take $58,000 and you move that into the town's budget, you know, that, that will make your, you know, your tax rate, you know, two and a half cents more. Yeah. Now, if you take $58,000 and you put it into the school's budget, you wouldn't even see a penny difference, you know, so, yeah. because that budget can absorb it, so it's... So it's such a bigger budget. Right. So really, as a town, if you look at the numbers, as a townspeople, it's better off being the school budget, because mm -hmm. it's not going to affect your rate yeah. as a yeah. if you moved it. Of course, I think we all know that our rate's going to get affected anyway. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 I guess it's why they formed the finance committee.
committee, a so, bank or audit committee or something. I know Louise so, is on it. So we are just gonna Lindley's gonna take care of all the people. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll plow it from here. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my little truck. With all the kids down there, they could go out and shovel it by hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's their PE time. There you go. So I'm gonna tell Bob. <laughs> 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 That is a good idea. Mm. There are kids that would be thrilled to shovel instead of sit in a classroom. That's right. <laughs> I bet you're right. No. Hey, when I was a kid, it, you, know, you know, if you got in trouble at school, you had to, That's what you're... like, you'd see kids out on the lawns, you know, doing the things that, you know. That's what we're doing wrong. I think I would be on if I did something wrong. You went and did some later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is else. Town manager report, do we have anything we haven't covered yet? Just, um, are you good with us taking that additional state aid of 38,908.92 and putting it into the capital or fund? Well, I, I mean, we want to stay for the same purpose, right? Yeah, just. It gives it so we have longer to spend it. Basically, yeah. if I leave it in here, you're just going to take There's it. There's no strings attached to that. One. No, well, no, because they, well, the strings are unfunded mandates. The fact is they're cutting how much grant, you know, right. aid we're going to get next year, and then right. yeah. they're making promises. So that's what I would like to see done with it is just is to move it yeah. so that we have access to it after June 30. But I yeah. just want to make sure you're all in agreement with that. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like it. Dave, Lindley? No, no. Yeah, Mom. Okay. Nothing else. Very good. <laughs> we have the select board minutes from the 19th, which is the special meeting. It was a joint, yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. World 10, so um, the other one will be in our packet for next time. Yeah, I just finished them today. What was that? 12? 12, yeah. And they're out on the website in draft, yeah. but I just need to send them to Kelly. So. You know, motion to approve those. So move. Second. Well, okay, right? All right. Well, there were a few different communications in there. And, uh, there's the energy committee. Constable yep. had some field reports from there. And there you got it in writing that the superintendent said you could have town meeting at the school. Yes. Class board road committees and then Oh yeah, class board. I, I didn't know <clears throat> see I didn't know that Don had gone to the class board road committee prior to He had he went like a couple days later. Oh, because the way it sounded here is that no. That he had attended and then he was going to go to the select board. No, he yeah, went. It was just two days after. That was two days after. Yeah, I was yeah. kind of reading yeah. 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 yeah, I had to yeah. do a double check of the dates. Yeah, no. He was. Yeah, it was after because we were doing our budget meeting. Yeah. And um, he was. Yeah, so he went there and then what I talked to Carl today, he said what he thinks they're going to do is that the class board committee is going to make. They don't really want to make recommendations to the select board, I guess. They're just going to do a report. Give us the information. <laughs> Report of not just there, but other things that they found. Gotcha. And okay. I didn't tell him, you know, we might want to call you to pick your brain a little bit because I said, Mo had some insight to that Paul's speak. He knew about a foundation for the camp and this oh, and yeah. that. And so he, and Don had said that. So I said, you know, Mo has, might know more about that. So. And I've hunted in there and I've never seen what the original Stagecoach Road is in there. You know, I've never seen where that went through or where it even tied into it. Yeah, mm. so I did tell Carl that today. I said, you know, Mo has seemed to have the most knowledge about that. So Actually, Gary Slackwood. Oh, okay. Gary, because the, they own the land in there, and of course the camp yeah. is, is too annoying. But, uh, and he may have reached out to him, I don't know. But um, he knew what you knew about the foundation. And yep, stuff. and I know right where that is. Yeah, so we talked about that, and I said, that I should because we mixed that by hand. I told I said, I'm pretty sure Mo said he and his father or somebody. Yeah, we, we couldn't so. get a cement truck in there, so we had to mix it by hand. Oh, jeez. remember that for a while. Yes, I did. Um, let's see. I've got, got a request. Hmm. The, uh, some of the, a lot of these reports we get, like the water project and, like, and the class 4 road, everything's in uh, 
292 Main Street or Town Highway 99 yeah. without going to some record and looking up. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, okay. So if you go 292 Main Street, is the town hall. Oh. I don't know where it is. Okay. And Town Highway 99 is Slack Hill. I don't know where that is. Right. Along with 99% of the rest of the people in town. Yeah, Town Highway 99, I think, is the one near Harvey Davis's. We had that. I do know where it is now. Okay, yeah. The point is, <laughs> oh, okay. I had to do some research. Oh, where sorry. Where someone just said, the road, yeah. I would know. I got that. All right. Yeah. On that thing where Town Highway 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would it's, uh, what is that over there? Marsh Road? Deary Road? Deary Road. All those signs have been cut off. Well, let me tell you about that. No, you know, that's true. They know. They and know. somebody found them. The lady who owns, is it Lincoln? Lincoln Farms? Farms. Lincoln, yeah. just Lincoln Farms. I guess she called and said, hey, are you going to some signs? And uh, Al was like, oh. so he, that's where I think they are. But yeah, they cut that yeah. hole. And last Three time. Three poles. Yeah. yeah. With the saws all chest high. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's I mean, right where you, like. Because, yeah. well, they had. Greased them. You know, we talked about that. And then the last time we used a plane on a tail full of cement at the bottom of them. Yeah. Hmm. And they cut them. And then we also talked to uh, one of them at one point. We talked about greasing because where I came from, that's we had this one sign in particular in town. That some, I think it was Taylor Ave. And and the road form was like, this is every kid in this town must, by God, have had a sign with their name on it by now. And so finally, we took this kind of grease, maybe Jason was with, I don't know, but he said, it, you, they put it on, and they said, you touch it, you, it was like blue, and he met some kids walking down the road one day, and he said, I can see all over that kid's shirt. He goes, I just smiled and waved, and kept on going. But I said, down, grease them, and he said, he and AJ had one, and they took this old used bucket of grease, and I said, make it hard for them, so they're going to steal it, try greasing the thing. He did, and he said, but they somebody called, so I mean what are you gonna do? I know, I know, you're not you know, you can set a boot trap or yeah. a on or something. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 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 we didn't talk about that. They'll steal by. Are you just well facing for the signposts? <laughs> yeah. I know. It's going to be kids. Well, yeah. I mean, well, well, kids. But yeah, <laughs> say that. Yeah, probably kids. That's one But anyways, they, it was too bad. So, but yes, they... And it's not cheap because of the new sign requirements, how big they have to be, those suckers, they don't give them away. Yeah. So, and, I felt and, bad. And the labor of keep putting them back. Mm -hmm. I know, and uh, they've tried several tricks, so they've been clever about it. Do we have anything else coming before the board? I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. All right.